In this next lab, we took care of the balance of the instructions from the move logical category. We have the logical AND, logical OR, logical exclusive OR, logical NOT, and logical, logical NEGATE. It also includes the clear instruction. The clear instruction is very straightforward. When you execute it, it puts a zero into the destination. So there's only one memory location that is addressed by the clear, and that's the destination, and it clears that word. The bitwise AND is going to compare two 16-bit words if identical positions, 0 through 15, so are, if they're identical, then it puts a 1 in that same position in the destination. So if you're comparing two words and bit 3 of both words are 1, then bit 3 of the destination is going to be 1. If either one is 0 or both are 0, then the destination is 0. The OR instruction will put a 1 in the destination bit position if either one of the two bit positions of the other two words are 1. Whereas the exclusive OR, it will set the destination to 1 if either one of the two sources are 1, but not both of them. If they're both 1, because it's exclusively OR, it will not set the destination to 1. Now the not and the gate negate, people get those mixed up. Uh, the, the negate instruction is the one that you would most normally think of. If you put in a value of 6 and you execute a negate, you get negative 6. If you put in negative 6, then you're going to get a 6. It just changes the sign. Whereas the not instruction goes through and bit by bit changes all the ones to zeros and all the zeros to 1. Starting with the bitwise AND logical instruction, we had you put in a rung of logic, save, download, go online, open data file B3 and lock it on top. Um, didn't mention it here, but also you would have cleared the registers B30, B31, and B32. Then we had you set the first bit of B30 to 1. And then while keeping a close eye on B320, which is the destination of the bitwise AND instruction, we had you set B31 bit 0 to 1. With both of those set to 1, that set B32 bit 0 to 1, because this is a bitwise AND. Now I had you go through and set the bits in B3 one so none of them matched the state of the equal position in B30 and then we ask you the following question are there any bits set in the destination word the destination word being B32 no then I had you change any of the bits that are set to 0 in B30 or in B31 but not both to 1 and what was the result same bit set to one of the destination words. So any of the bits in B30 or B31 that you set to one from this bit pattern of alternating ones and zeros would have made both bit positions in B30 and B31 equal to one. One and one equals one in Boolean algebra. So a logical AND ANDs the two sources, source A and source B, and puts the ANDed result in the destination. So if source A bit is 1 and source B bit is 1, then the destination will be 1. In the next step, we had you modify the logic a little bit. We had you add a timer and then move the timer accumulate value into B3 colon 0. That way, with a time base of one second, every one second, the value in B30 would increment by one. Then we had the logic AND B30 with input image I colon 0 dot 0. So basically, you're ANDing the accumulate value of the timer 
that changes every one second to the switch pattern of the six switches that are wired up to your inputs. Looking at B31 and any bits changing state, what can you conclude about the relationship now between them and T4 colon zero accumulate value? Bit zero of T4 colon zero accumulate affects the state of bit zero of B31 as long as the complementary bit in input colon 0.0, .0 is set to 1. So B30 is, is going to constantly change 1, 2, 3, 4, and you'll just see the bit pattern uh, incremented across. But bit 1, or we should say the bit 0, the first bit, it's going to go on and off every other second. So every two seconds it's going to be 1. For one second it's going to be off and one second it's on. So if you had input 0 on, then B31 bit 0 would go on and off every other count. In the next step, we have you edit the logic, open data files B3, I1, and O0, and lock them on top as shown. Switch on the first four bits of data file I1, which means the first four switches on your hardware trainer. Input 0 through 3. While watching the output LED cycle through 0 to 15, try turning off any of the four inputs and observe the effect, effect upon the output LEDs. The N instruction may appear to be the same as the mass move instruction, However, it's not. The AND updates all 16 bits of the destination every single true scan, whereas the mass move only updated those bits in the destination that were open through the mask. In other words, if in that bit position in the mask there was a 1, then it would update that position from the source, whereas the bitwise AND updates the destination every single true scan for the program. Each bit position and the destination were to set to 1 if both corresponding positions in source A and source B are equal to 1. 1 and 1 is equal to 1. 1 and 0 are equal to 0. 0 and 1 are equal to 0. Very simple instruction. Instead of beginning with the two instructions OR and exclusive OR, we're beginning with equivalent logic. It, m it much better typifies or shows the behavior, the difference between OR and exclusive OR. We had you turn on the inputs one at a time while observing the two outputs. Do the results of the two rungs of logics vary when you turn on the inputs one and only one at a time? No, they both behave the same. However, alternately turn on two or more inputs at a time while observing the two outputs. Did the results of the two rungs of logics vary when you turn on the inputs two or more at a time? Yes. Why? Exclusivity of rung one. If this memory location and not these are true, then turn on the output. So looking at rung one, you've got if input zero is on and inputs one and two are off, then turn on output one. So it is exclusively or one or one of the others, but never one or all of the others. So rung one, if all three are on or one is on, the rung is true. In rung one, if any more than one is on at a time, then the rung is not true. Exclusively or. Then we had you expand rung zero and rung one to include all six of the inputs available to you on the 10-point MicroLogix 1000. And you can see if you're just doing OR with bits, then you can branch around and just keep adding them. However, every time you add another input into the group, you have to go back in all of the earlier pieces and add true if off for all the other inputs. So if we were to add a seventh input, which you don't have on your PLC, but let's say it had seven inputs. You would branch around, you would drop down another branch and have 
True of five zero, true of five one, true of five two, true of five three, true of five four, true of five five, and then true of five six. But then you would also have to go back in the first section and add true of five six, true of five six, true of five six, true of five six, true of five six. Otherwise, the first five sections of this chunk of exclusive order wouldn't work properly. I'm sure you understand this. Here we have a little bit different logic. Uh, we have a retentive on timer which allows you to start and stop a timer and have it stop at an accumulate value. If this were a TON, retentive on timer, if you made the run go false it would reset to zero. So this gives you an opportunity to cycle a value basically zero through 15 even though the preset set to 16 and you can pause it anywhere you want by simply turning off input zero and when the timer is done it stops. Anyway Allow the timer to accumulate to 2 and stop it. While watching B31 and B32, switch input 1 on and off several times. Does the value of input 1 affect bit 1, which is the second bit, bit 1 of B31? No. Does the value of input 1 affect bit 1 of B32? Yes. Which instruction would you use if you wanted to know if one and only one of two choices were true? In other words, if you were looking at two bits and you wanted to know with, if one of them was on but not the other one, one and only one, which instruction would you use? The exclusive or. Okay, we had you add another rung of logic that you, that uses the NOT and the NEGATE instructions so we can compare the two. Remember I mentioned earlier in the introduction that a lot of times uh, people confuse these two instructions and if you're using these in a project and you forget how they work just come back to this lab and go through it real quickly and it'll it'll refresh to you. Okay comparing the destination of these two instructions you're comparing B33 and B34 to each other B32 is used as the source for both of them. So if you if the source for both of them is equal, the difference in the destinations will show you the difference in the results. Does a not and a negate cause the same results? No, nope, we've already said that. What is the difference in the results? Changing the sign versus inverting the state. So the NOT instruction, if you look at B32 and B33 very closely, you'll see that all the NOT instruction does is change the bit pattern. If there's a 0 in B32, it changes it to a 1 in B33. If there's a 1 in B32, it changes it to a 0 in B33. Whereas the NEGATE instruction actually changes the sign of the value. So if you look at the source versus destination in the negate instruction there seems to be no rhyme nor reason between the bit positions. However if you look down at the bottom of the screen you'll see an example where B32 which is the source for both these instructions is set to 6 and then if you look at 4 it's negative 6 so the negate instruction negates B32 and stores it in B34. So it takes a 6 and makes it a minus 6. Whereas the NOT instruction, if you have a source of 6, you get a result in the destination of minus 7. Now why it's one off and it's negative, that's another, that's a conversation for another day. But remember, the negate instruction is used to change the sign on the value and that's all. Whereas the NOT literally flips the state. So if you want to toggle the state of an output word, in other words, have all the outputs all change state, you could use the NOT instruction to do that. Okay, the last thing we had you do in this section, 
of the move logical instructions was the clear instruction and the clear instructions should be very clear to you it just clears the destination but to show you a little possible application uh, that you might use with a clear instruction uh, we had you put in a bunch of latched output instructions and we had you alternately turn on and off input 0 through 3 one at a time and that latches up the bits basically you remember from an earlier lab in the basics manual that latch and unlatch do not have a false execution so the latch instruction sets the bit to 0 but when the run goes false because the latch instruction has no false execution even though the instruction is now false because the run is false it doesn't do anything so if the last thing you did was set the bit to 1 it's still set to 1 now uh, we then had you toggle input 4 on and off did all of the latch bits reset yes they did what this demonstrates for you is typically uh, programmers avoid the latch and unlatch instructions because they do not want to have to keep track of all the bits that they've latched when it comes time to rinse the process or reset it in other words if you latch all the way through your program then you have to go back and unlatch if you had latched you know 27 bits you would need to have 27 logical unlatch instructions however instead if you set aside specific words in B3 or N7 and you set those aside and say I'm going to use these for latches you can then clear them in groups of 16 and it makes finding the latched bits easier so using the uh, fill file instruction you can clear as many in the little processor you can clear as many as 105 integers words in one instruction so literally you could latch 105 times 16 bits and then with one instruction the fill file you could fill all 105 integers with zeros you need to check the manual for limitations by data type so the f the fill file varies by data type and by processor some of the larger processors you can execute the instruction against a larger stack or a larger file of words